All right. <clears throat> Looks like Cold has started recording and caught me in the midst of eating an orange slice. So, um, all right, guys. Um, is everybody ready to do this? All right. Yeah, so, yeah. if you have, um, so so I'll just go through the you know kind of how this is going to go quickly. If you have either attended I, you know panels one or two live or listened to the recording, this should be pretty familiar. Um, so, you know, we're going to do a quick introduction, um, you know, sort of each candidate is going to get an opportunity to sort of, you know, tell us you know, a little bit about yourself, why you're running for EP, what do you aim to accomplish in this sort of like next term? Um, you know, everyone's going to get two minutes for that. I will, you know, keep time. And if people are sort of getting close to time, I will you know, call that out. After that, we're going to, uh, you know, spend some time sort of giving everyone, you know, again, a couple minutes to answer <clears throat> the question about, you know, kind of like your vision for Echelon, you know, where do you see Echelon in three years? And, you know, after that, we'll sort of do the same sort of format, uh, you know, answering the question of, you know, what are the key issues you currently see in the Web3 gaming space and, and how you think Echelon can help to solve these. Finally, in, well, I guess not finally, penultimately, uh, in the final 10 minutes, um, you know, we're going to give the candidates an opportunity to sort of, you know, have more of an open forum and ask each other questions. And, you know, with the time that we have left after that, we'll get to some audience Q&A. So if that sounds great um, or, or just even acceptable, uh, <laughs> We can kick things off, and since uh, Nyan is the first person I see in the in the upper left, uh, we can start with you. Hey, sure. Thanks, guys. Uh, Vu, just a quick question, though. Um, so should I speak about everything uh, in this go? Because the last panel, I think what everybody did was they did a quick intro, and then they came back to uh, the question of why they want to run and what they want to achieve. Um. Oh, yeah, that is, uh, oh, yeah, well, let, let, let's just do, you know, yeah, the intro and, and what you, let, let's just do it all in one go, uh, two, two minutes and 30 seconds all time. <clears throat> right, okay, thanks. Um, so my name is Nan. Um, you've probably seen me on Discord. Um, I'm in the crypto space since 2013. I've worked with crypto media, uh, data companies, including Coin360, um, a crypto hedge fund, um, OKX, the cryptocurrency exchange, I worked on the priming more recently and more known to the community. Um, I specialize in Marcom, but I've studied law uh, and business management with an emphasis on management, marketing, and finance. I manage my own portfolios. I, I trade crypto. I trade uh, mostly parallel NFTs. I do on-chain data as well as research. Um, generally, my experience has been in, in, in content, but over the last um, seven or eight years, I've, I've worked exclusively in the crypto space. I've been an ardent parallel fan, um, and it stems from a childhood spent uh, playing video games for days on end, from GTA 2 to competitive Call of Duty. Um, I can build my own PCs from scratch. I own many consoles. So this is very close to my heart from, from many aspects. And I'm honestly thrilled to be here, to be part of this community every day. Um, and that's why after spending about a year or so in the community for, for, for the last 12 months or so, um, I wanted to kind of participate and contribute more um, and when the EP um, elections came up, I wanted to participate and I wanted to um, take a chance at this um, in order to contribute more. And I have a lot of areas where I can contribute you know, based on my specific experience. So I understand that Echelon wants to in year two. So everybody's done a great job setting up year one. But in year two, we're looking at uh, ecosystem expansion. We're looking at perhaps, uh, probably setting up more communities. Uh, we're looking at more education. We need a lot more content. We need to manage a lot more vendors, probably suppliers, contractors. We also want, um, like I said, documentation, which is technical documentation. We need content. We need educational content. We need a, a lot of miscellaneous things are needed uh, when, when an ecosystem expands. So I, I think given my experience in crypto, given my skill set, given my um, um, resume as well, and my passion for the project, for the ecosystem, and for the community, I, I, I think I can very meaningfully contribute to that, um, and I would love to do that uh, if the community wants me in. Um, and why me, I think, is what I'll say is that, you know, when, when, when I ask for, for, for a vote, 
Uh, when you vote for me, you know, you, you don't have to hope that I will, I will deliver on these things. You don't have to hope that I'm committed to the project or the ecosystem. You don't have to hope that I will put the interest of the ecosystem and, and its participants first. You don't have to hope that I will have conviction of what we're building, because I think I've already proven that I have that conviction, that I believe in the community and the project and what we're trying to do here. And I've done that not uh, one day or a week or a month. I think I've done it um, for a very extended period of time. Uh, and I think everybody um, here can can is, is kind of has seen that over whether it's on Discord, whether it's on chain. Um, so I think I think I really would love to contribute um, in an official capacity, and I think I can I can do a meaningful contribution. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Neon. Um, okay, so that was three minutes, and I was just looking at the format again, and so uh, <laughs> I'm going to give everyone three minutes uh, rather than two and a half. Two and a half, I think, is a bit close. So. Um, yeah, moving on to uh, J.K. Ray. Uh, yeah, three minutes. Just uh, give us give us a little bit of color about who you are and you know, why you're running and what you hope to accomplish. Awesome. Hold on, let me just start with the timer here. Uh, so <clears throat> I am J.K. Ray. Um, I've been a part of the parallel ecosystem for. I think PD2 was my first experience into it. Um, have been in Web3 space since early 2021. Um, and then, of course, been uh, aware of and following uh, Echelon since its inception uh, with the first prime proposal and, and all of that. Uh, so my background is, is actually unique compared to what a lot of other candidates are, are focusing on and um, you know, it's not computer science, it's not mathematics or uh, development or programming or any of those things, uh, which all of them in their own right, of course, have strengths, but uh, mine's a little bit unique. I actually have a background in law enforcement, um, intelligence, worked at a 24-7 fusion ops center. Uh, and then more recently, my time has transitioned to uh, human resources, uh, and that's where I really think I am able to contribute in a new and meaningful way, uh, especially on behalf of Echelon. I think that what is often lost in the Web3 space is the personal aspect of it, um, engaging with communities, focusing on transparency and accountability and and community you know, oftentimes it's kind of a trite saying to talk about community, but truly I think utilizing the groundwork that Echelon is building, um, we see the relationship that they have with Parallel and translating that, um, that ability to build out something like we're seeing those of us who have been able to play the alpha, translate that to what it could become with other gaming studios with other platforms, uh, I really think is is groundbreaking. And to be able to do that and focus on ideas like, like education, um, community engagement, these are huge things that I focus on in my day to day that uh, really center around how can you get through what it is that you're trying to achieve um, through various forms of educational material, uh, learning management systems, document sharing, um, engagement, you know, that's receiving feedback from, from the community, you know, in so many different ways. I just think that I offer a unique perspective that's not entirely seen all the time. And uh, I'm excited to, to hope that that, that helps Echelon uh, in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much, J.K. Ray. All right, uh, wow, such. Let's just go with wow. Wow, you're up. Hey, everybody. Uh, wow here. Um, you know, whether you guys knew it or not, you know, I've been kind of campaigning for this position for five or six months. You know, I I, I, I realized pretty early on that the there was this kind of perfect storm of, of timing and, and um, opportunity and, and passion uh, to, to make a run at this. And so, you know, I started, you know, sharing a lot about myself, whether that was through stories, whether it was through pictures. And, you know, it ultimately led to, you know, my wow such origin 
the story and then you know me me doxing and coming out and saying hey guys here i am you know like uh because when you when i look at how i'm running and you know i i posted a big thing uh during the nominations about my pillars you know the first one being trust through transparency you know, when I look at what challenges Echelon and Parallel are going to have in, in this upcoming year coinciding with the game launch, I think really it gets down to, you know, when Web 2 and, and what happens when these gamers realize, shit, I like this game, okay? And it's a lot of fun and I'm having fun playing with Glintz. Uh, but I keep seeing references to Prime and there's like these other things over here. And what happens when they go to learn about all that? And I try to put myself in their shoes. And, you know, I've been in crypto for over a decade now. You know, I've seen multiple cycles, um, you know, and I, I've seen the, the hate, <laughs> I mean, for lack of a better word, that we get sometimes. I mean, all it takes is go to a Reddit thread and look at the comments. I think Ninja, like a week or two ago, posted something in the cryptocurrency subreddit. And they just they just shat on all, all, all over us for like, uh, you know, the entire post and then locked it. And so, you know, it's a big uphill battle. And I think that when those Ga traditional gamers turn to look at us and at us as an echelon for information around this. If, if the message is coming from someone that is hiding behind a profile picture of an NFT or something, whether that's right or wrong, I, I, I've been a wallflower in this space for a decade because I'm a very security minded individual. But at a certain point, I feel like some of us that have been around for a really long time and that are know what we're doing when it comes to security, it's time for us to step out a little bit and be like, hey guys, let's help some of these newer participants through. Because I do think the fact that anonymous, trustless transactions is the way of the future, the, the, the issue is, is that we're dealing with two generations, right? You have a generation that's gonna be crypto native, like my daughter who's, who's six, and you have a generation that is like my dad, they, they don't have a clue. And I, I think that we have an opportunity, that I have an opportunity to help bridge that gap, uh, specifically when it comes to uh, you know this community and gaining Web 2's trust. So thank you. Awesome, thank you, wow. All right, we're gonna go to Mac 10. All right, thanks, uh, Boo, and everybody for joining in. Uh, my name is Mac Ten. Also, uh, my name is Jean Marc. Uh, you guys probably have seen I've docked myself, docks myself as well, um, as well said. Why I'm running? Um, the you know the main thing I'm running for is I saw that there was a business development side then and, and uh, piece that that Echelon was looking for, and that's kind of my bread and butter. I've been in the crypto space for quite a long time, but working full time as a business development. Uh, lead uh across multiple projects um and that's kind of my my bread and butter as i've said i've built this large network and i think i could um utilize that network to uh leverage uh leverage that network to benefit the echelon um you know i've actually originally got involved in parallel through one of the founders i had left my job at one of the uh one of canada's largest exchanges there and i'd reached out and wanted to connect uh, with some of the guys and see what they were up to. And, and he mentioned that he was starting an NFT project. Um, and I, I quickly joined the presale and, and got involved there. I mean, <clears throat> realistically, uh, kind of like what WoW uh, was saying, I kind of want to run on, on um, transparency here, uh, bring fairness as well, uh, and, and kind of help build out that educational piece and help uh, bridge the gap between Web 2 and Web 3. Um, I didn't, uh, you know, I, I uh, kind of just wanted to run on, on fairness and transparency. Um, and, you know, for myself, I think it's really important right now uh, as Echelon continues to develop that we make sure we get um, the value proposition right for, for ourselves. And that's where I kind of really want to kind of put my best foot forward and help, uh, you know, build those that uh, those partnerships and network um, and, and, and help uh, make sure that we have the proper uh, you know, that we put on our mask first, right? Um, we've seen a little bit of a rocky start, some bad, uh, uh, like as Wow said, we've seen some of the the bad um, uh, rap that uh, Web3 Gaming is getting. Um, and so I really kind of want to help uh, bridge that gap um, and and really kind of make sure that that Echelon is uh, kind of that golden standard. Um, and I think I'll just leave it at that. I kind of want to keep it short and sweet. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. And Sergeant Skill, finally, uh, you know, last but not least, um, <clears throat> yeah, a little bit about who you are and why you're running. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Bio. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'm Sergeant Skill. I've been a big fan of Parallels. I heard about it just before Backdrop 1. Um, and it's definitely been the best thing that happened to me, uh, you know, in the crypto space. Uh, before that, I was a lifelong gamer, although TCGs are somewhat uh, newer to me. And so you will find me in uh, the rookie queue for now. Uh, most of my career, I've been an investor. Uh, I also worked at two hypergrowth tech companies. I've been in crypto since 2017, and you know, I'm extremely excited for what this technology uh, can do to how people game. Um, I was an inaugural EP uh, with Bu, Cold, and you know, I think you know the rest of us. Um, and so I'm running for re-election. Um, why am I running and what I want to accomplish? I think, you know, I think we've established a very good foundation so far, um, and I'm excited to help execute the next phase. It's, it's a really exciting time for Echelon as you know, as you all know, the token has just become transferable and the game is now in the wild um, uh, and you know, going to open up to more and more people. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, we're asserting our independence from, uh, from Parallel the Studio. And so you know, I think to take one example of what that means, you know, we've always had our treasury, uh, you know, but now we have a treasury that's uh, you know, a bit larger uh, and that has a price that fluctuates all the time. And I think that creates... Uh, a lot of new opportunities, but also you know challenges uh, for us as foundation. I think uh, to take another example, um, and this, this maybe is a bit of a segue to uh, I think what maybe the next phase, which is sort of challenges Web three gaming overall. But I think you know one of the unsolved problems I would say uh, you know not just for Echelon Parallel, but for the space overall is is marrying the concept of you know earning while playing and gaming for fun. Right? I think we're all we're all here because we've always gamed for fun. And so I think, you know, the, the initial concept of earning while you game, it sounds like, oh, that's just like gaming, but better. But I think what we've seen is that these incentive structures, um, I don't think we've quite seen an incentive structure yet that, that uh, doesn't sort of uh, devolve into, you know, basically people just gaming to earn and then that reduces the fun for everybody else. And so... You know, as Echelon and Parallel move to open up the game and launch the sinks and the the incentives, I think um, you know that'll be a big, um, I think, exciting um, particular problem to work through over the next year and beyond. Um, I think one of the things that make make me different, or my experience and my independence and, and judgment, I think I've had a pretty varied career uh, where I've seen and worked through a lot of different problems, uh, from deal structures to sort of analytical and research problems. Um, you know, I am currently an EP, but I came to Parallel really as I am now, which is as a collector and gamer, uh, you know, not an investor in the studio. I'm not a, a member of any DAO or collective. Uh, so I think I represent a kind of a more independent voice and, and one that's probably similar to most of the community today. And, and, and I think the community that we hope to grow, grow into. Um, yeah, I think that's three minutes. So I'll get on to there. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> all right, everyone, we are going to move into the more kind of like direct uh, question section. So here everyone will get two minutes to answer the questions and, and I'm gonna time these again um, and try to keep it there because we have five people tonight rather than four. So, you know, the first one uh, is sort of, you know, where do you see Echelon three years from now? And, you know, how would you help, uh, you know, Echelon achieve yeah, this vision where, where you and EP? And yeah, we'll go back to the front again, uh, Nyan, Let's start with you. Um, yeah, whenever you're ready, just go. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. So in three years, um, I would want to see Echelon having uh, more titles uh, under the belt, so so to speak, uh, actually games. Um, and so the thing with we're trying to solve here is is with Web3, and Web3 has m mostly basically two issues, right? So it's quality of games, and then there's adoption. So the games part is very important because that's what brings in the users, and uh, we want. I'll, I'll give the example of, for example, Sony here. So when they when they break into the console business, the, the biggest thing they want to do is not just the console. The technology is there. It, the hardware is there. But they need those exclusive titles. They need those games to bring those people on board. So once you have the users, then you can actually make people chase you. And people chase you for, for a lot of different things. So you need that network effect. You need those users. Um, 
in the case of PlayStation, again, now that Sony has uh, successfully put out exclusive titles, it has attracted a user base which is loyal. There are people who come to the ecosystem. They enjoy the ecosystem. They enjoy the offerings here. Uh, not just the offerings that Sony has, but offering some of the developers also. And then obviously, because of those users, developers are incentivized to make even even better games uh, on 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 that on the in the ecosystem, right? So we want to do that with Echelon. I would love to see Echelon going down that, that direction. Now that needs a couple of smaller things, some nuances to that. So you, we need games. That is fine. Parallel is is a great example of a great game coming in. Then we also want adoption. And integration of technology is obviously at the back end, and that's fine. But then there's the UI, UX, and marketing aspect of it. We need to treat this as a funnel. I think we have to have a flexible process here where we test, for example, the usability, the ease of access for uh, Web2 people. We want to see how we can make it better for them, how, how we can attract them, how we can attract them to this ecosystem per se. Um, and Echelon then has to become an ecosystem that supports not just exclusive titles. Hopefully, we will do more exclusive titles. But also, for example, we would we want we would want to perhaps help people port games from 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 the mobile ecosystem or other ecosystems. I mean, I'm just kind of throwing ideas out there. But I think the end goal that I would want to see is Echelon becoming and potentially even becoming or potentially even. Um, publishing games themselves if they need to, uh, just as the case of Sony, for example. So I'd want to see that happening. I would want to see us focusing on that adoption and that bridge between Web2 and Web3, uh, treating it as a funnel, like I said, and, and working with game developers closely, trying to test those things, get, gather data, optimize the process, and make sure that you know the ease of use is sorry, there. Sorry, yeah. just going to cut in. Yeah, sorry, sorry just uh, want to keep going on time. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for the answer. Um, mm -hmm. Love that. All right, uh, JK Ray. Um, you know, to, to repeat the question, um, you know, sort of where do you see Echelon three years from now and how would you help see this vision through? Of course. Uh, so three years from now, I kind of envision Echelon at least agreed to in part or working towards uh, you know, a relationship with one or two game studios and corresponding games. Um, I, I think the key with this and, you know, I almost hesitated with that first statement. Um, building a game in, in general is expansive and, and what it entails um, really just is all encompassing. So I, I certainly don't want to set the bar too high for Echelon, but also don't want to undershoot. Um, I felt like this was a good spot. I think it's really important to utilize the same framework that we have with our relationship with Parallel. Um, what works, what doesn't work? How are we communicating with the team? How are we utilizing the framework of the Echelon ecosystem, uh, Syncs, the Prime Token, um, all of those things. How are we using those tools to build and foster relationships with these new games and their studios? Uh, I think the idea of you know a more simplified game, certainly we can't expect AAA games or, or the like to, to be something that would be easy to implement in a time frame like that. I, you know, we can use Parallel for an example. They've been in development production for multiple years. We're just now seeing the alpha. Um, and while it's exciting and really groundbreaking, you know, I think we have to have a tempered idea of how, how quickly that is going to come along. And then lastly, I think to, uh, to bring that into the fold with community, education, education, education. Huge focus on onboarding and what that looks like in terms of communication, transparency, everything that involves the community. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, wow, we can cut over to you. Where do you see Echelon in three years and um, how would you help us get there? All right. Well, first of all, I, I, I don't know the future. And between now and three years from now, there's an infinite number of decision points that are going to happen where we can go right or left. And I, I think what's more productive, perhaps, is maybe telling, saying what, and again, I, I'm running on a, on a bunch of pillars about engaging the community, right? And I think that it's going to take a village. It's going to take all the EPs with varying roles and responsibilities to help navigate this. You know, we talk about landing the ship, like landing 
prime, launching prime. Now we're sending a ship back out, right? And what what does that look like? Does it, you know, I think in order for us to to attract really, you know, good teams to build good games and and the ecosystem around those games, right? It's not just enough to have a great game, but you you have to have sinks that are going to have high velocity for Prime, so that that we're not it's not just a, a suck on on the ecosystem, right? And so, to me, to get there and to get those quality of teams, we have to prove that we can get it right with one game. And guess what? We're in alpha right now. And for those of us who are in there, we know that we have a hit on our hands. The problem is, is that, you know, when is game launch, right? Towards the end of the year. And so we can we realistically court another game or a studio in the near term? I, I don't necessarily know that we can. And so, you know, three years from now, for sure. What? But what does that look like? There's a million decisions that are going to happen between now and then. And, and I think it's going to take a village. It's going to take all nine of us to, to come together and decide, you know, when we hit an inflection point, you know, which direction to take. And so, you know, I, I'm not going to, you know, say one way or the other, just that I, I, I hope to help get us there. Awesome. Thanks, Wow. And yeah, um, yeah, we can cut over yeah, to, to Mac 10 now. Uh, same question, Echelon, three years from now. Um, yeah, where, where do you think we're going to be and, and how would you help us get there? Yeah, I mean, hopefully Echelon kind of becomes that golden standard, the Web3. Um, and I kind of look at Echelon in parallel as you know, a whole ecosystem. Um, and I kind of just wanted to reiterate that point. I think it's important for us to kind of focus on the ecosystem and put, you know, like in the airplane, you want to put your own uh, mask on first. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, their ideal goal would be to have this web three of steam, right? But being a Counter-Strike beta player myself, I remember, um, you know, that transition started at Half-Life, then we got a mod, uh, which became Counter-Strike. And then all of a sudden you had to download the Steam client to continue playing that. And Steam kind of grew out of, um, you know, the Valve Studio. So I think it's really important to kind of focus on uh, building out the ecosystem. Um, and one of the things I, I'd like to do is to kind of bring in those those projects that help build and add value, right? Um, we talk about wanting to bring other games, but the challenge question to that is why would a studio want to work with us? And I think if we can prove that the model, is, that the, the value proposition is there, and uh, and build that ecosystem i think that'd be really important for that value proposition um and so like for what i'd love to do is start bringing in those projects that help bridge that uh you know bridge that gap um and get us to that point um things like you know uh what uh some of these ecosystem uh, projects that we're looking to support that help build and add value uh, bring in those educational pieces and kind of really help make it easy for anybody to gain access to uh, Web3, and I've seen other projects such as uh, Horizon Blockchain Games and uh, another uh, good friends of mine, they created a game called Skyweaver, but they also created a, a very um, user-friendly Web3 wallet. Love to see how we could partner up with them and, and, and other things like that. But I think most importantly is just taking this one step at a time. Um, you know, our goal would be to get to that Web3 Steam, uh, the, the Steam of Web3. But I think if we just take that and break it down and, and do one step at a time um, would be the best method. And that's how I'd love to do it is, is by, you know, making sure we build out that communication between new and existing games and studios and, and make sure that they know that who we are um, and, and what value we bring to the table as well. Um, and, and that's where I'd love to to add value. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. And Sergeant, uh, yeah, same same question. Oh, hold on, Sergeant. Um, yeah, sorry. It looks like other people cannot hear you. I can hear you, but other people cannot. So maybe try um, to 
leave the stage and then come back and Okay, if you're talking, I cannot hear you now. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe try to fully quit Discord and um, like power cycle any um, <clears throat> headset or, or anything you're using. All right. All right, we apologize for the technical difficulties. It's okay. Cold, cold will fix this in post. I think that was mostly a joke. I don't know if cold can fix this in post. Hello, testing. I can hear you. Can other people? All right. Yeah, I'm. I'm hearing that it works. All right. Sorry about that. From the top, uh, echelon oh. three years. Where do you see us? Sorry about um, yeah, sorry about that. So um, so from the top, I think long term, you know, Prime Prime is the utility token for multiple studios and the preferred partner for uh, for for studios that want to enter the space or that are that are starting to uh, build in the space. I think where we get there is through some combination of our community and the technology. Uh, I think what that means uh, in the next year is kind of proving out the the game and the model uh, for uh, the sort of continual redistribution that we have, uh, the play to or the win to earn concept, or however it evolves over time, but basically proving that um, this game is good and that that we can grow the community. Uh, and the second is, I think, deciding whether there's one or two kind of technology projects for the foundation to invest in, whether it's a marketplace or something else. I think something that uh, other potential partners will uh, be attracted to and that may also uh, provide some revenue to the back towards the foundation uh, and the community. Um, I think, you know, we'd love to have a proof of concept for a second studio or game on the platform. Um, and, but, you know, I do think in the first year or sorry, I guess this is about the second year, I do think in the next year, um, we are probably still going to be a little bit more in listen mode and opportunistic. And at the same time, uh, potential partners will be, will be kind of watch, watching us and seeing, first of all, whether the game is any good. We all, we all know that it is, but that still needs to be proven. Uh, proven. Um, and um, and uh, yeah, so that's, I think that's, that's, where, that's sort of where, where I see the focus is for the next year. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much for that. All right, we're going to move into our next question, and, and we're going to have this be a bit more you know, freeform and engaging. Um, you know, love for you guys to just sort of have a discussion. Um, I'll set a timer for 12 minutes or so, and, um, you know, we can sort of just see where the conversation takes us. But, yeah, the, you know, I'd love to hear all the candidates discuss sort of what do you think the key issues, uh, you know, impacting the Web3 gaming space are right now? And in what ways is Echelon sort of uniquely positioned to start to address these? Um, yeah, I'm not going to call anyone in particular. So whoever wants to, to sort of kick it off, um, yeah, go for it. Sure. I don't mind starting this off. Um, I think the biggest issue is this whole thing about play to earn and um, I think that at the end of the day, a lot of these games weren't fun to play. Um, you know, I, it sucks to admit, but I'm in wave two. So I haven't had the time to, uh, or the chance to play yet, but I'm really excited. Uh, for myself, you know, I've been a, a gamer my whole life and play trading card games, so I'm super excited. But I think um, right now, one of the biggest problems is that a lot of these games kind of became this universal basic income. You know, I used to run an Axie Guild myself, um, and this was... You know, I'd interview these scholars myself. You'd see they live in shack homes, and and you know, it was it was great to provide them this opportunity. But at the end of the day, you know, if you asked them, would you continue to play this game if they weren't getting paid? And the answer was no. And it kind of became this, uh, you know, 
you saw what happened with Daxi. And I think that when you, that was kind of the, the model that everybody took was this play to earn model. Um, it was exciting. It was cool to see. Um, but it also left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. Uh, at the end of the day, I think it's really important for, for, to have a good game, um, that people want to play regardless of this, uh, play to earn or whatnot. Um, and so I think that's really important. You know, I'll, I'll say that the, the majority of gamers haven't even got to the play to earn, you know, aspect of things here yet. Like when I put myself in the shoes of a traditional gamer, you know, I, I, I feel like there's so many things that have already happened that they've already shut us out, right? Like whether, you know, they, they might've heard about Bitcoin, they did, you know, they had the opportunity to, they didn't invest, they missed the wave, they're salty, right? These are gamers that, you know, for the most part, they build their own PCs, crypto mining. Every time a new generation of GPU would come out, they go to their local Best Buy. Sorry, we're all sold out. You know, there was some serious, like, you know, issues there that they, like, would, you know, extrapolate onto crypto without even ever giving us a shot, right? And then on top of that, you know, there there's just the narrative that, that mainstream media and other people have been trying to push. You know, I, I've seen it for the last, you know, decade is that, the, you know, we, we don't get the right informed reporting in the news. We, we never have. And so uh, for the majority of people, I don't even think that they've ever given us a shot. A shot. And to me, you know, the parallel TCG is literally a, the most well-designed Trojan horse you could possibly imagine. At every point along the way, the teams came up with, you know, ideas like glints, you know, to make it a game-first experience. And then, oh, by the way, here's all these Web3 aspects that are really deep and rich, right? And so we're going to roll this Trojan horse right up to the gaming castle of, of the world, and they're going to let it in because the game is freaking fun. And they're going to go, and they're going to, you know, be having fun. They're going to be feeding this horse glints and then all of a sudden they're going to be like well hold on you know what's what's this prime thing here and it, at that point they're going to make a decision all right am I going to go down the road and investigate what's going on in prime or am I going to stay here and live in this glints world the rest of my life and some of them might but I think that there's a there's going to be a serious amount of people that, that that come over to the prime side and and want to learn more because at the end of the day humans are greedy and if they can play a game the same game they're playing but their friend over here is playing the exact same game but he is making money he is making prime then he is going to make the effort to learn and so i think there's an opportunity because humans are inherently greedy there's they're going to give us a shot you know how skittish they're going to be i i don't know and that's why i think that the it, at that point we need to be there you know in in full transparency walking them through what is prime what is echelon here's some helpful videos you know here come join our trip uh, twitch stream and so that to me is where the opportunity is because w they have set up the perfect trojan horse for for web 3 and that's parallel and i'm sorry mac 10 that you haven't gotten in there to play but you know tomorrow you will so uh see you there yeah i mean i, I I, I do agree. I think the one of the main problems so far is the lack of a sort of game first project. Um, you know, thankfully, I think you know we're well on the way. You know, Parallel is well on the way to releasing a you know super fun triple A top quality et cetera game. Um, I I do think though that there is a bit of a I think there's still a bit unsolved problem of whether sort of crypto native gaming. Um, you know, how viable model is it really? And I did mention this a little bit in the intro, but um, just for me, I think when you, when you add financial sort of, you know, financial type incentives to a game, it has sort of lots of downstream effects uh, on the entire system, including sort of the games with other players. And so, you know, I think one of the, one of the ways that we're, we're thinking of approaching that is, is, okay, you only earn prime when you win. But I think, you know, you could still imagine, um, if 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 it's lucrative enough, you know, people uh, still spinning up a bunch of bots to kind of play and sort of lose, you know, eighty percent of their games and maybe win twenty percent, and maybe some of those games are against other bots, and so they don't really care. Um, so, and that you know that'll affect the experience for everyone. And so I think, you know, I think um, 
there is going to be this balance of you know incentives to game um, um, and 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 sort of the experience for everybody. Uh, I think that's still an unsolved problem, and I, I and I'm not sure you know we we will 100 percent solve it. But I think if anybody can, it'll be uh, you know Echelon, you know, in combination with with this great game, which is which is parallel. Yeah, I wanted to kind of sort of build on that. Um, I think everybody agrees that the main issues are quality uh, of games and the fact that users uh, of Web2 games don't really want to play crypto games. I think Echelon is in such a great place due to the fact that Parallel has such such a high bar in terms of quality. So whether that's graphics or, or gameplay mechanics um, and usability as well. I think the most important thing here for me at least is to understand that when the game uh, goes public, for example, we will very likely get a lot of people to try this and enter the ecosystem. And when it comes to user acquisition, the first impression is really, really important. So I think uh, Echelon needs to focus on shaping user behavior. So when those people come in for the first time, the dots need to connect for them. Uh, they need to understand. So a couple of things they need to understand is firstly, why uh, this game needs the Web3 uh, functionality and how, the, how it benefits them. So that needs obviously education, but it also needs, uh, like I said uh, previously, a, a bit of a marketing mindset to it, to treat it as a funnel, to make sure the UI UX is, is tweaked to the point where you know people really make sense for them. It's intuitive. They just get it. Um, and that that first shot is really important. You don't want to miss that first impression. So I think that's where, where Echelon is in a good place to do it and should focus on. I, I think that when you consider the state of Web3 gaming um, and compare it to Web2, it's, it's basically a moot point. There, there is no comparison. Um, the problem is, is that if you look at the history of Web3 gaming, you find examples of just bad actors or uh, bad implementation, very NFT focused, right? And then you, you take parallel on the other hand, where the sure it has NFTs involved with it, and you know there's benefits to utilizing NFTs, but that is not the focal point of it. They're letting the game speak for itself. So the idea is how how do we navigate the middle ground between that, um, and then play on that to advertise it, to pitch it to your native Web two gamers. Um, I think of games like So Rare, for example. I'm very heavy sport enthusiast, and things like Zed Run, So Rare, even DraftKings, which is, you know, in essence, it's gambling, but it has a gaming aspect to it, right? So, um, how do we get people to play these games without the promise of winning something or without the focus on you have to pay to play? but really um, cashing in on the idea that it's a good game in its own right, but there are all these different aspects to it that you can utilize if you want. Think of what they did with Reddit, um, the recent avatar drops, right? So onboarded millions of people without them even knowing that they were receiving NFTs, calling them digital collectibles, having people sign up, right? Um, you know, I'm not saying that that's the answer, but looking at how these other companies are executing and then saying, okay, how can Echelon utilize what we already have in place? How can we bridge that gap and then shoot for the moon? Yeah, I mean, you all made really great points. And, you know, for myself, when it came down to parallel is like um, the model fit, right? A lot of these games um, kind of like any other project is like, do they need a token? Like, do you need NFTs? And I think parallel um, and, and any other game you want to bring on, you want to make sure that it fits that uh, or that NFTs are really needed. And I think for myself, from a trading card game perspective, um, I even remember Kalos talking about it in 2017, 2018. Um, at consensus is something we talked about. Um, and here we are now, but I think the model fits right in a lot of games like they're just adding NFTs as a money grab 
Whereas like when it comes to a trading card game, actually having that ownership, like I myself, I love opening a parallel pack. It's the same as opening uh, an MTG pack. It's, and I, I love that. I feel like I own that thing. And I think making sure that 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 stays true and that these projects do, uh, you know, that adding NFTs or, or sorry, adopting NFTs adds value to that, I think is, is super important. And as we've seen with uh, Parallel, I kind of say that it, it's truly bridged or taken an analog concept and, and brought it into digital. Like we have Marvel Snap, we have um, Hearthstone, all these games. But to myself, I, I still like, I don't see, it, it's not fun. Um, as fun i guess I, I like the competition i like that um you have to earn it um you know and 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 such so and it's not just a pay to win type uh, model I, I really do like that uh, that it's really kind of encompassed that idea and, and that's really really important is that games shouldn't just try and put uh, fit a square peg through a round hole in this case right like do you need nfts and i think it's always a good uh, an important thing to to focus on all right, I'm going to jump in here since we are at our 12 minutes uh, and moving over to our next 12 minute segment, which is uh, kind of ask a, ask a question to another candidate. Um, you know, there's something that, you know, someone has said that you want clarity on or, or a point that, that somebody made that you want to kind of tease out a little bit more. Um, you know, please ask each other questions and, um, you know, again, Feel free to have this be a bit more of an open forum, but you know we'll try to keep it to about uh, 12 minutes. Uh, go ahead. Um, yeah, sorry, thanks. Uh, I got a question for WOW. Um, yeah, noted on your kind of application post, I guess you could say, um, where you were talking about helping facilitate your wife's business, um, and that had been you know, she primarily does a lot of it, but it was still a, a big learning point for you. I'm just curious how you could utilize what you've learned through that process uh, and translate it into success with Echelon. You know, I, I don't know that uh, there's a, a, a point A to point B with, with a correlation between what I would do here versus there. I mean, uh, she's, she's in the beauty industry. I know more than any man should know about the beauty industry, um, but but the fact of the matter is is that when you're building a business, it, you know there's it's two three steps forward, two steps back a lot of times, right? And you don't know what you don't know until you encounter a problem, and you know every time you go up, you know. Uh, you know, whether that's in revenue or employees, you know, you get presented with a new set of issues that you didn't know you had before, right? And so, you know, in this in in that sense, I could see how, you know, helping navigate, you know, echelon. We we, you know, a year from now, we might not know what problems that that, you know, we we didn't foresee. Like I was talking about with uh, where do we see echelon in three years from now? Um, you know, we, we complexities of adding a game versus gating prime to be simply uh you know for echel uh for parallel studio property games those are two completely different paths right and at some point we're going to have to make those de a decision do we go left or do we go right and if we do go left and we do bring on other other studios there's going to be complexities that we didn't foresee, right? And I think that that's how, you know, when, when I approach, you know, our Mrs. Wild's business is that, you know, you reach a new level, you you add on X amount of employees, and now you have all this additional complexity that you didn't necessarily have when it was just like two two employees, right? And so it's it there's a learning curve there, and um, you know, I I would hope that the combined uh, you know, skill sets of these nine people that, that we can work through that stuff. Right. And so that's, you know, when it comes to her business, I would say, you know, but as far as direct correlations, no, I don't think anybody needs, uh, you know, any beauty advice. <laughs> uh, I have a question. I think, um, yeah, maybe for, for Mac, uh, Mac 10, if, but for a while, I guess you both talked about um, transparency, but I'm curious, you know, how you would uh, sort of prioritize transparency when, you know, there might be a situation where it might make it more harmful 
uh, kind of the beneficial to sort of spill the beans, as it were. Yeah. So I guess like I'd love to elaborate on that. And that's kind of where I tripped myself up there because I didn't want to use all three minutes at the start. Um, I think it's important to have transparency, even if it's de facto. Um, we've already seen it kind of. Um, it's hard to make judgments, right? And and I guess like the question come back is like why, you know, um, when we're looking at re-elections, like someone like yourself, how do we know what was discussed or or what your positions were on certain values? And it's kind of you do want to, you know, if you're electing someone or trying to re-elect someone, you do want to see kind of, um, you know, what their what their stance was on certain things. I think it's important to have that uh, communication if and when possible. Um, I also think it's it's important to. Uh, uh, as well said, to, to be as docs as possible. Um, but I, for myself, I think it's more about um, having these discussions in more of an open forum um, when certain matters are being discussed, if that can be, uh, if if and when possible, uh, if it could be de after the fact, then that's great um, as well. But I think it's just important to kind of have that transparency so when decisions are made um, that, that people understand the process that it got to that decision. You know, when we when uh, when there was that initial kind of community call, someone had asked that uh, that question. It's like the the echelon comes out as one voice, but uh, we really don't know what each EP had had stood for, and so how do we know who to reelect, so on and so forth. Um, so it's kind of my thing is really more engaging the community, getting their feedback. Um, you know. I, as a community member myself, I'd love to kind of see what discussions are being had if and when possible. Obviously, if there's kind of what I would call insider information or things that people could uh, use to to their advantage. Um, obviously, you want to keep that um, those discussions private or things for other reasons um, legal. But yeah, that that's really kind of my idea here is just bringing more transparency into those discussions and decisions being made. So I, I've actually kind of expected this a little bit, right? It's because like when, when I talk about transparency, you, you have to, who, who are the actors involved here, right? And so like when I say trust through transparency, I'm talking a lot about the Web2 gamer, right? And so when they come to see us, I want them to see people giving instruct, you know, like faces, giving instructional videos. But let's talk about like, like what came up recently with like the the prime launch right and so like how there was this idea of of uh you know whether people could uh lp or not right and so they're like well we found out about it at the last minute and then you know it's different than what we voted on right and so like there's the transparency with the team and so from for legal reasons there's probably a billion reasons why you know you guys can't say things and, and there is that's not going to change right and so the tra there's transparency with with different participants and so if you're talking about with if i'm an ep and what can i and i know a bunch of internal stuff and i can't speak about that stuff right the i guess that's my second pillar right mission statement driven mindset when we are given the opportunity to talk about something, when a bulletin comes out, you know, I as a longtime community member here, you know, there's this mad scramble of everybody grabs the bulletin, they they read through it, and then they got a million questions. And there might be somebody on Discord answer one of the EPs answering some people, but people consume information at different points in time, and so like they're, you know, that they, they might read it. Some other people might read it a day later, right? And so when I say mission statement driven I come from the corporate world right and so to me a mission statement every decision that my group had to make had to be defensible like does this decision provide value support or enhance the mission statement and so I felt like there was an opportunity that when we do put out a bulletin there could be like a cliff snows version where it, where it just says like oh the reason that we you know took this kind of stance in this paragraph is because it supports our mission in this in X Y or Z way right now whether there's a cliff notes version of a bulletin that comes out so that people can see our logic and why we made these decisions um, or if it's like maybe some accompanying video where we all kind of just have like a round table and we read through it almost like we do 48 hours later when we do the call with the community right that my only issue with the call with the community 48 hours later is that for 48 hours it's a free-for-all of just like community going nuts asking questions misinterpreting things right so it takes 48 hours to hear from the eps say well this is what we were thinking 
Well, why couldn't that come out when the bulletin comes out? Why can't we have some accompanying kind of document or video that says, "Here, this is what we were. Th here's the document, but here's what we were thinking and why we talked or why we came to these decisions." And so, when I talk about transparency, it depends on who is consuming the information, right? Is it the per is it the Web two gamer that's trying to learn about Prime, or is it the people that are in you know the group formerly known as Card Econ, uh, you know, consuming a bulletin and they're getting information from EP? So there's two different kind of versions of transparency. I hope I made sense there. I'll give it up for someone else. Yeah, I'll ask, uh, I'll ask Sergeant uh, Skill a question. Um, so you've been, you've been in, in Echelon for one year. Uh, what did you think was the single most critical challenge for Echelon? And uh, how do you personally intend to uh, improve on that or do better uh, in the second term? Yeah, I think, um, I guess I think that one of the biggest challenges is related to this topic, which is um, this concept of building, building the public. Um, I think there is, um, you know, there's definitely a balance of kind of communicating what's planned, uh, you know, even when things might not be 100% certain. Um, and, um, you know, potentially, you know, doing something that might result in in, uh, in um, disappointment in the future. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's what I would say generally. I, you know, I do think at a at a at a macro level that that problem becomes you know has another dimension to it this coming year than it did last, which is okay. Now the token um, is publicly trading and you know has has a price that's sort of associated with it, and so. It's it becomes you know not just uh, you know I think for potentially for potentially for regulatory reasons but but also from the community's perspective even more important to I think be especially thoughtful about that. Um, so uh, so yeah, so I think that's the biggest challenge. I think it's something that you know as as a, as a group of eleven and next year group of group of nine, uh, you know, we've, we've had a lot of internal debates um, around how, how to deal with this. And I think, um, you know, ultimately, because it is a consensus type mechanism, the sort of decision, let's say, gets rounded down as in, you know, kind of if enough people sort of don't think we should share something, then, you know, we, 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 we don't share it. And, and, and um, you know, I don't know if there's an obviously a better way, um, but I think hopefully, um, you know, with some with some new people and sort of continuing to listen to the community, um, we might get you know continue to kind of improve on that. Awesome. I was hoping I had a little time for one question for everybody. If that's okay, Boo. Uh, sure. Red. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can spin for everyone. Um, yeah. Hopefully, okay. uh, it's a quick one. Yeah. I mean, just kind of following up on that, I think like one thing you said is is uh, you know, now we're going down to nine people. Um, do you think it's important that these EPs all are one not affiliated with um, or don't have a job? But I'm looking now and boarding, I think uh, um, boarding had brought it up as well is like at what point right now we have a couple people running from PDAO, some people running from Young Capital. We already have people sitting. Um, you know, is it important that EPs are, are not affiliated to kind of keep more of uh, to avoid conflict of interests or? or or such. So, um, just kind of wanted to follow up with that. Sorry, is that that's for everybody, or is that is that for me? Yeah, um, yeah. Anybody? What do, what do they think on on that stance? Um, could be anybody. Yeah, sure. I think. Um, I mean, I you know, I th I do think a balance a balance is good. Um, you know, I think. You know, as I think about voting myself, um, you know, I think the. Uh, I'll probably be more focused on the individual. Um, you know, I think that uh, anybody, it's, you know, I think there are enough people that probably will take this seriously enough so that the sort of com potential conflict of interest can be minimized. Um, and, you know, I do think there's some value too in having representatives, you know, from different important stakeholders, uh, whether that is, um, Paragons, um, or, you know, the parallel team itself or, or Yunt. 
Um, I don't think there's a problem with that, necessarily a problem with that, unless it you know becomes uh, to be too many people. Yeah, there's rules in place, right? Like we can't have more than three. Um, but I, I think every one of those groups deserve a voice. Okay, they're all a part of this community, and I, th I think that for them, you know, to not have representation is would be a shame. But the opposite end of that is that you know you can't have too many of the same group all being represented on this board. So, um, you know. The rules are in place. That's what they say. I don't think I, I hold it against anybody because they have dual roles. Um, you know, me personally, I don't. Um, you know, I feel like I'm representing the largest community, which is you know the the, the most ardent fans. You know, to use a, a overused term. Um, you know, Cardicon. So, um, but I think everybody deserves a voice. Yeah, no, I think I think the balance is important, uh, and I think it's uh, very important for independent people to campaign. Um, and I think that it's 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 especially more important that people who are who have been embedded in the community to campaign and also uh, get a get a get a seat uh, to balance that thing out. Yeah, I would just echo kind of what Wow was saying in terms of you know what's already in place, but you certainly don't want too many cooks in the kitchen, um, you know, being mindful of how many people represent, you know, who and is that uh, sort of muddying the waters, so to speak. Uh, like Nane was saying, I think it also is good to have, uh, you know, unique individuals who are independents and aren't affiliated with, with uh, any representation or organization um and then of course you know i think it it allows for the most organic conversation to occur uh you know i think in one of the last panels i believe it was rarity who had a question asked about um you know do you consider this to be a conflict of interest or um, what are your thoughts on that and he gave a really good response uh, i think J. Crew as well, Paragon is is another example, but these are folks that are very well aware of, you know, what their stance is and and what they can bring to the table. And I, I think it's, you know, good to just be mindful of not only the benefit that they can bring to the table, but um, but also just temper it a little bit. Awesome. All right. So let's move into the final section here, which is audience Q&A. So um, I guess there is a stage chat. There's also voice text if you can't figure out how to do the stage chat. But yeah, if anyone from the audience has a question they want to ask either the, the, the group or a specific EP, please uh, dump it in the chat and then I'll read them out. Dior is typing. Wait, where? I think you can type there, Dior. Yeah, you can type there, Dior. If there's a question that you want to... I'll, I'll read from there. There's also apparently a text box for the stage, but I also didn't know that until like literally today. Okay, so it looks like we got the first one in here. Um, all right, this is from SP Sup. Uh, in the long run, how do you think the majority um, middle to low tier users are positioned in the Echelon ecosystem? Will they become pure uh, consumers and enjoy it, and enjoyers of the game only, or are there pathways for them to profit economically? Um, yeah, I guess anybody can feel free to, to, to field this one. I'd love to jump in on that one just because I think that that is me, honestly. Um, I'm not really a, a high tier user, so to speak. Um, you know, I, I wasn't here at the start of 
I didn't do pre-sale. PD2 is, is kind of where I came into play. And in the grand scheme of things, that might elevate me a little. I'm not sure. But uh, in terms of just where I'm positioned in the ecosystem, you know, I, I feel like um, it's more for me personally a focus on on being an enjoyer of the game. Just because, one, I've seen the game and I, I know it's excellent. Um, but also, you know, your question about pathways for, for benefits, I, I think it's very viable even in this stage. Um, it's certainly not going to be to the level of, of those who have been in it and, and dedicated a ton of time and hours to it. Um, but I do think there is multiple ways to enjoy it from a... Um, you know, game standpoint, but also economically. Yeah, I think um, I think it's a good it's a good question, um, and I think it should definitely be top of mind for all of us. Um, I think the full kind of incentive structure isn't set in stone, of course, and so things can change. But I I do think um, you know a couple things to remember is I think one you know any any if, as long as you have a deck with. Um, some NFTs in it, uh, you you will be able to earn Prime. Um, it is more of you have a complete deck, but I think one of the cool things is, well, let's say, um, let's say you're really good at TCGs and you invent a new deck that nobody's using, and those cards are cheaper because people don't have them in their deck, and so you could go buy those, but buy those cards, make a full deck out of that, and, and earn just as much as somebody who might own you know 500 cards. Um, so you know that's just one example, but I think. My main my main point is that um, it's definitely a good a good thing for us to be thinking about, and um, you know things are not you know things are not set in stone. There's no kind of play to earn or win to earn even live yet, and so um, but yeah, I would I, I, I would feel pretty good about that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's also important for people to realize that just by nature of this being Web three, because they can own those digital collectibles. I think there's many pathways. For, for that kind of benefit, even for low and mature uh, participants. Uh, so for example, composability, for example, replication. So there's just too many pathways just by the mere fact that these are, uh, you know, owned collectibles. You actually own them. Yeah, it's a good question. I uh, just to add to that, I think like at the end of the day, um, what would be great is just that they, they're playing the game for fun and they don't even know that they're, they're playing within this echelon ecosystem. Um, when we look at parallel, there's tons of paths for them um, and opportunities. I'm sure that as the game evolves and things continue on uh, for them probably to earn. And I could see things such as like tournaments or leaderboards, things like that, where people can get a piece uh, of that and earn some cards um, and and kind of get their toes in the water. I know that with Coinbase, they're going to be selling cheaper packs, things like that. So um, at the end of the day, I think that that ease of use and, and without like, you know, they should be coming to play the game uh, first, not coming to, to earn. Uh, and that should be a bonus. I mean, the one thing I, w I just want to say is I think we need to continue to to separate Echelon, the foundation, and Parallel, the company, right? We are the scaffolding on which Parallel, the TCG, is being built. So, you know, the question is posed as our is there a way for you know lower tier users to 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 do stuff within the Echelon ecosystem? But then we're kind of all answering things that are very parallel related, right? And how they built out their ecosystem. So, you know, I, I, I really want to make sure that, you know, we're the scaffolding on which these games can build their platforms, right? And so, you know, to the extent that the token is tradable, that they can trade it for sure. But, you know, we don't, um, you know, make artographs, right? Like that's that's really has to do with the team and the, the parallel TCG team. So I just want to make sure that, you know, I think sometimes that we use Echelon and parallel TCG almost inter interchangeably when, you know, if we are talking about bringing on other games and other things, you know, these, these are different organizations, right? And so I think that that question kind of walks the line a little bit. And so I just want to make that differentiation. Yeah, no, I agree. That's why I was I was saying we should focus on digital collectibles, just the ownership aspect of it, and that kind of opens up so many pathways, not particularly just for parallel, but you know other games as well. Awesome, thanks everyone. I'm gonna get to the next question from Sherpa, and okay, it looks like Dior. Okay, I think Dior posted one as well. 
All right, Dior, I will get to yours after Sherpa, since theirs came in first. Um, <clears throat> all right, Sherpa asks, or says, I think the biggest issue with play to earn is hackers, especially if we are incentivizing good players without uh, with making them rich. Anyone considering how to tackle hackers in the case where we incentivize good players making loads of money without the YouTube, without the YouTube and Twitch, purely through gameplay, not talking parallel specifically. I have many friends that were insanely talented but didn't want to seek esports or socials, so they failed to make any career of it. So I guess to distill the, the, the question maybe a bit, it's, yeah, how are we considering how to handle, <clears throat> you know, I guess pretend, you know, bad actors when you layer in the fact that, you know, good players will be incentivized uh, potentially with, you know, lucrative financial rewards here. Um, I'm not sure how, you know, if we're looking at the ecosystem now, uh, in terms of like parallel. So we kind of want to avoid parallel itself. I think the the best thing is to, um, you know, look at examples where, where there were bad actors, um, in the NFT space we saw with Axie, where people were multi-accounting, things like that. I think the main thing here is <clears throat> not to create the incentives for bad actors and, and kind of focus more on, on good, good actors and, and rewarding that good behavior. And I think that. When you looked at some of the mistakes other uh, projects have made, is, is that there there are incentives for for bad actors and people don't add value to the ecosystem. Um, we saw it with bot farming, things like that. Hackers, um, obviously, we saw in Diablo where you know it, it's not as fun. Uh, to me, I absolutely hate hackers. It ruins a game. Um, so it's it's always a problem to have. But hopefully, uh, you know, we can we can create models that don't don't incentivize that. Um, but it's it's kind of a constant cat and mouse game, I, I'd say. Yeah, I think uh, just to echo that. I think it's it's a good question. I think anti cheat is is probably a bit more in the um, kind of parallel parallel camp since they're kind of the you know the ex executable for the for the game itself. Um, but certainly, you know, anything Web three is in sort of custody of assets is 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 prone to certain forms of hacking or phishing. And I think there's definitely a, a bigger role for Echelon to play in, in the education around that, especially as we start to onboard, um, you know, non-crypto native people. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, back up Sergeant here. I, I really do think that this is more of a parallel question than anything, but it, it, at the end of the day, I mean, if you look at like, you know, just anything, if, if, if it can be gamed, it will be gamed. And then it, it just becomes a cat and mouse with the developer to f a figure out what they're doing and then b build, build guardrails that you could kind of, you know, massage them, uh, you know, like away from those those kind of behaviors and that's at the end of the day it's not gonna ever go away the sheer fact that something exists to be gamed it will be gamed <clears throat> i think that just hopping in real quick um again agree with with wow and, and sergeant just about it being more ep focused but uh if you take a look at an, a recent example with Yuga Labs and the Dookie Dash, um, you know, there were several things that came about, about bugs and uh, hackers and, uh, you know, all these threads about how you can cheat the game, basically. But it's how they communicate. And this is the focal point for me here with Echelon. How is it communicated that we as EPs will, will mitigate that, um, you know, we, we can't account for, for what games will do, but, you know, like everybody's saying, there's always going to be bad actors. So um, how can we be prepared to um, to sort of work that into our equation, so to speak, um, and, and just be ready for, for any contingency? Yeah, I mean, to, to quote a, a wise man, if you're, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, Ricky Bobby, right? Um, but I think it, it, it helps build up that, uh, strengthen the ecosystem and strengthen the game itself. Um, this is kind of it, it. It's uh, like it's a cat and mouse thing, you know. It just it just makes you stronger, right? Um, and, and better, and you know, just uh, you know, um, yeah. It's just really kind of something you, it's hard to avoid. 
All right, we're going to get to Dior's two-parter, uh, and, and and I'm going to try to ask everyone to keep their answers quick here because I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, all right, so I'm going to also try to just distill uh, – you know what yours getting at here so name something that the prior board of echelon did not do a good job on and don't give a kiss ass response uh be real and uh you know tell us something that genuinely disappointed you and how you would have done it differently that's part one and then part two is tell us a tangible goal that you plan to accomplish with your year's ep not something generalized that you can check off a list but something you know like very real and specific uh, I believe I captured the intent of that Dior, um, but yeah, let's kick that off and yeah, hopefully keep it um, you know as brief as we can. Um, and you know, after that, I think you know, we'll we'll sign off here. I mean, I can go. I got my answers real quick. So you know, to, to your first question here, Dior, um, you know, I I go to the fact that I've been in this community, you know, since Pack Drop One. Um, you know, I always felt that there was a better way to disseminate information, right? Now, I, I get that there are periods of time that they can't talk about stuff. What I key in on is once they can reveal information, it's how you how they reveal information and in what format, right? Like, you know, if you want to give a bulletin, great. Tell me, tell me how you arrived at those decisions. If you don't have like, if if each decision isn't defined sensible about how it provides value supports or enhances like the whole echelon foundation then it shouldn't even be in there right and so give me a document but then also tell me why you made those decisions whether that's through a, like a cliff notes version of the document or some sort of supporting video or whatever what have you so that's that's my second pillar and so that's why I think is a quick and easy answer there. And then to your second part is what is an actionable thing? You know, I, I, I think that um, for a fact, I've wrote about this in, in my fourth pillar, which is role, knowing my lane, right? Like I'm not here to define tokenomics. And I, we got some really smart people having really intelligent conversations um, that are our EP candidates here uh, about the tokenomic size of the thing. You know, I put in my proposal about, um, you know, an all out marketing blitz when it comes to getting our name and our mission out there, right? I even, I, I outlined this in my fourth pillar. You know, I came up with a marketing campaign called the Prime Combinator, which which is leveraging, you know, the, 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 um, the awesomeness that is like, you know, if you know anything about the Y Combinator, right? That whole process. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, Echelon become an incubator. That's that's not what I'm saying at all. But what I'm saying is it's a play on the prestige that is the Y Combinator, right? So we got the Prime Combinator and, and that would be the the basically the the title of this of this marketing blitz. And if you want to learn more about it, I know we're trying to keep things short. I did write a lot about it in my nomination and it's on a medium article uh, under the fourth pillar. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll I'll add that I think Echelon majorly struggled uh, maintaining the harmony with the community. I think uh, that has been a key issue, uh, and they've done a great job of everything else. It's just that I feel like they could have done better in terms of, like I said, keeping the community on board uh, with everything. And that does not necessarily mean that you have to be transparent about everything, but it does mean just you know just being there more for them. I think. And that is why I feel personally that an important, um, a key community representative is key uh, for this. So I intend, uh, a lot of the other goals are obviously multi-year, but in one year at least, uh, I do intend uh, to improve on that if I get elected, uh, community activation, onboarding, and, and kind of, you know, improving that harmony between Echelon and the community, and not just the parallel one, but even other ones that we onboard in the future. Yeah, um, I, I agree with some of the guys, especially on the, and I don't want to to kind of reiterate on the that uh, communication within the community. I think um, I also find some of that that uh, information could be quite uh, all over the place, and sometimes it's not updated on one site and keeping like you know um, update update and easy to find. Um, I found myself it was quite a struggle to find those kind of things. So I do uh, feel that some of that communication uh, that we're talking about or transparency is lost through through many different resources. Um, but I, I do feel that Parallel has done an amazing job of organic growth. Um, but at the same time, uh, from an echelon standpoint, 
Um, I think marketing, uh, while well, has kind of mentioned that as well, but marketing is something that really hasn't been put to the forefront. Um, and it's, it's kind of, uh, we, I don't want to jump back into the example of parallels, but in that sense from marketing, uh, it's been really heavily relied on the community and I'd love to see kind of more of a, a, a more educational engagement approach. Um, as Nate said, if, if, you know, I become EP, my door is always open. I want to be that voice for the community make sure that their voices are heard as well. Um, not in a de facto manner. That's why I always wanted to have that kind of open transparency. Um, and in terms of what I could do, um, and what I'd love to get accomplished in this year is really kind of get some of those gaming studio partnerships. Um, I've already kind of helped connect the parallel team with Horizon Blockchain Games. Um, if it, people don't know, they created a game called Skyweaver. They also created a Web3 wallet that is very intuitive to, to use. You don't even need to uh, write down a seed phrase or anything. It's a multi-sig smart contract wallet. And then, so people who come into their game don't even need to know anything about crypto or Web3. They just use a social login to sign in. Um, but I would really like to start utilizing our networks that we already work with um, from the guys at Chainsafe. They have a great uh, SDK there for for NFT gaming um, to also working with other studios like Skyweaver uh, at your Horizon Blockchain Games and bring those guys on board. Um, I know those discussions have already kind of started, uh, but I'd like to kind of continue and, and work on that with those, those founders. They've already created some really good uh, projects that could help the ecosystem grow. Um, and and hopefully even become part of that ecosystem. It's a very tight knit community here in Toronto, and um, I know they've already spoken, and and we're all we're all kind of friendly um, friends uh, friends in competition, right? So um, for myself, I think it's very achievable to uh, open up those conversations, start them going, and and help kind of build those communities together. And you know, all rise tides, um, rising tide floats all boats, right? So. I think the last thing that I'll say here is just what I felt was lacking from Echelon in the first year was uh, engagement with the, the community, and rightly so. I mean, they were building out the groundwork for, you know, as Wow said, the scaffolding to to launch, you know, Parallel, to launch all these other studios in the future. And, and it, of course, had to be right and had to be uh, ready to do that, but in the second in the second year, and as an EP, I would really focus on engagement with the community using methodologies like uh, focus groups, getting feedback on what is important to users, not just in the parallel sense, but those who are invested in the Echelon community and and understand what it is that uh, Echelon Foundation is trying to achieve. I think. Uh, people want to be heard. They want a voice at the table. And at the end of the day, so long as you can say, yes, we hear you, uh, we might not be able to execute on everything that you're saying, but we hear you and you have a voice and it matters, then I think that's what they want. Um, yeah, I think a lot of good, a lot of good points here. I think for me, um, you know, I guess maybe to echo some of some of the things that were said, I think you know, I think what we want, you know, when 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 we when Echelon launches sort of, I guess anything, I think the sort of strategy should really be to, you know, communicate the right amount, but communicate at a level that, which you know, the the foundation sort of end product can always sort of be better than that. So I think, uh, you know, the goal there is so that you know nobody's sort of disappointed. Now, even that can be a little tough because obviously in crypto, speculation can run, can run wild. Um, but I do think, you know, the one example is the, the Art and Prime program, I think specifically uh, the reward structure, we, you know, we did think we could offer a key there. Um, uh, and, you know, I think after after more work on the, the token distribution, it, you know, it seemed like that wasn't viable. And so I think that is that is, you know, something where it's sort of that bar as far as kind of under over delivering, I think wasn't wasn't fully met. Um, uh, so that's probably something that I think, you know, myself and several others think we probably could have done differently. Um, I think specific, you know, as far as question two, um, I would say, you know, as I think about entering year two with this, um, you know, with our, with our, with our treasury, um, I think my, my, my main goal will be to build consensus with both the other EPs and the community on a real framework for how the treasury 
uh, gets utilized. Um, so I think that will come into play certainly for uh, any kind of grants or bounties, um, and all, but also for for any um, uh, sort of longer term investments that that might be made. Um, so we're we're kind of going through our first um, you know proposals on, on that, and so this 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 framework will uh, sort of have the, have, have the opportunity to be. Uh, crystallized. Um, I think the, you know, I think more more broadly, I think what I what I try to do in the first year is really represent the the voice of the independent collector and gamer. Uh, you know, whether it's the charter or the token distribution. And I, you know, if, if I am elected, uh, that's what I hope to continue to do, kind of in year two. Um, uh, you know, just as more uh, decisions and um, you know initiatives, uh, you know, reach the. Uh, reach the EPs. Okay, all right, it looks like Mac answered, I can wrap up. All right, perfect. Um, that's all folks. Um, I'm gonna go play some alpha and uh, if you're in it, I hope you will too. Um, I think there's one more panel left in this first round tomorrow, I wanna say. So yeah, catch everyone then. All right, peace. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, folks. Thanks, everyone, for their time.